tracks, Cadillac tracks, man. I wanted to make another beat making video for y'all today. Um, I made one um, just the other day, and uh, somebody had made the comment on the video. Uh, he said, uh, "He said I made a template. It took me eight minutes. I thought it would be hard, but it was easy." And um, it just made me realize that a lot of y'all still don't understand what the template is and what my channel is about and, and how it works. So I just want to go over that real quick and show y'all a beat I cooked up. Looks like I'm already pretty much finished. I just need to sequence and mix this beat out and maybe add some more sounds and stuff like that. But um, with the template, the template isn't just a template. You know, when you say the word template... I know it confuses you because a lot of people think that I just mean, you know, anyone can go up here to Fruity Loops and just go to new template and just make yourself a template and have on your template. You can have different um, effects that you have on your mixer and have a mixer all colored and have it all color set up and have everything labeled. And you can even have little little things that you like to use all set up and you got all your mixer tracks. That's a template. And uh what I'm doing with my custom template is it's a little bit different. It's a little more than that. So it's not just a Fruity Loops template. What it is is it's a setup or a configuration so that we can use that hardware, the machine MK3. We can use that to control Fruity Loops. So when I have the template or I have the machine, I can just push Shift in MIDI. And I can do stuff like open up the playlist in the channel rack by clicking on a button and open up the piano roll in the mixer. I also have an extra menu screen that opens up extra menus. And we have a maximize button also. So if I have the rack open and I want to maximize it or the playlist, we have a maximize button. And that can be for any type of effect or any window that's maximizable. <laughs> we also have the exit window button. So any window that's open, I can push a button and I can quickly close it with my exit window button. And then I also have this channel effects button. For example, any channel rack that I select, like this one right here, anytime you select a channel rack, if I clicked right here on the mixer, it's gonna, it's gonna select that channel rack on the mixer here as well. Anytime the channel rack is selected on the mixer, I can push my channel effects button. And it's gonna open up any effects that are on that channel. And you can see it doing it right now, one by one opening up these different effects that were right here so that's a good button to have because anytime you focus on a channel inside the mixer or on the channel rack it'll actually open up all the effects on that channel at the push of a button real powerful feature I added and then um I have this over here where I can push the file save button so on the machine I can push a button it'll save my project also I have a button I can push on the machine mk3 where it's gonna open up my settings page this is the settings page where I can go in and I can change my MIDI and audio settings quickly. And there's more features on the template. I have stuff that I've added like metronome. I can change or I can push a button and I can switch the metronome on and off. I have a snap button where I can push a button and we can change the snap without having to use your mouse and click up here. I have a tempo button where I can spin a knob and I can set the tempo. I also have a tap tempo button on my template where I can push a button on my machine MK3. And it starts to tap the tempo and set the tempo on whatever rate I'm tapping the button. We have an undo knob. That way I can undo. Usually when you undo, you push Control Z and you push that however many times you want to undo. But with my undo knob, you can twist the knob. You can undo up to 100 steps or 100 edits at the, at the turn of a knob. So it's a lot quicker and a lot more efficient than your regular undo. And also I have a jog wheel. The jog wheel, what it does is it allows you to jog through different samples using the wheel on the MK3. So I can go through like this. Let me turn that uh, my speaker off. I can go through the sounds just like this. And whenever I want a sound, I can just click down on it. It'll load the sound up into whatever is selected on the channel rack right here. Also with this right here, when I'm browsing over here, I can... Um, push back and I can close folders like if I wanted to close this parent folder I can close that folder and just browse into different folders that I have right here click over go into subfolders and once I find a sound that I want I can push down on it and it'll load it up it's a lot more effective than um, clicking it with your mouse it's a lot faster also we have the piano set up so if you ever tried to load up an instrument inside of Fruity Loops you'll notice that you can't really go to the instrument like so and just start playing the piano roll and start 
you can't play the piano roll and start playing minor chords or the major chords or the scales that we have set up in machine if you load it up in machine you can you know, just push scale mode and you have scale set up but what I've done on my template is I allow you to play in the scale in the minor scale and I also have other scales right there on the pad so you can load up an instrument right inside of Fruity Loops like this guitar and I can just start playing different pads and it's gonna play different notes right on the pad so we've linked that up and that's one of the big features because that's one of the one of the reasons I made the template I wanted to be able to you know play the uh, minor mode and the minor scale and the major scale and all these different scales on the pads when I load an instrument in Fruity Loops instead of loading it inside a machine and that's what I've set up for y'all and it's got a lot more features it's got a solo and a mute so I can solo and I can mute these tracks my audio tracks 17 through 24 so that's eight tracks that you can solo and mute and then there's a volume knob where I can turn the volume up and down on the instrument and it'll move this knob right here so we've already linked the solo and the volume for eight tracks I have another page that's completely blank in case you got an effect or something that you want to link up, any effect, and just load up one. I'll just load up, hell, guitar rig, you know, and um, any effect. If I wanted to automate this little input knob, I'd just go ahead and select the, the controller and set it to one of these open slots. So I have eight buttons and eight knobs open. So I'd set that to a knob since it's turnable. And it would save that. Every time I save my project, it would save that link that I just made right there on any type of effect or knob inside of Fruity Loops. So we have more stuff like I have um, all these features up here, the stop, play, record, those are all linked up and, we, and we're able to open up all of these right here. So that's really what the template is about. What you see in front of you right here, this is just integration so that I can lay down notes here and they trigger on the machine. So when I have my machine up, it's real neat because it looks like a ghost is playing the machine and I can see all these notes that I lay down here I can see them light up on the pads almost like I'm finger drumming it and um, it's real neat man and also we can finger drum inside a machine and I could just finger drum this drum pattern on machine with with two hands and it would record all these notes simultaneously meaning at the same time it's gonna record all 16 channels or 16 pads right here on the Fruity Loop step sequencer and it's going to record each channel rack all at the same time and they're all going to be on time because we can quantize inside of Fruity Loops just like we quantize with machine so this is the type of integrations that I'm talking about being able to lay down drums here and have them come on machine or lay them in machine and have them come here and just work back and forth flawlessly we also have functions like this lock function or you can uh, save different lock states. You know, on machine, if you have a bunch of effects or something on a sound, I could have one lock state where I got the settings one way, and then I can have another lock state where I have the settings completely different. Stuff is muted, stuff is turned up and down, and I can push a button and switch between these different states. Can't do that on Fruity Loops. You can't have one state and another state. You can't even undo and change you know stuff that you've done to a an effect or a knob if I move a knob and I go to undo it it won't undo that knob if that knob is on an effect or an instrument so that's the power of lock states and you can sequence those out so I can have them I can go into the play piano roll and I can sequence this is lock state one lock state two lock state three lock state four and you can draw it just like we would in Fruity Loops and we also have this functions button a lot of y'all this functions button right here is how you can do stuff like note repeat and chord mode from machine right into Fruity Loops. So I've tried to show you all that because I have 150 plus videos on my channel. So if you're checking this one out, take a second and look at my quick tips. I have it organized in the different playlist on YouTube. All right. So this is the integration and um, you can't really set that up in eight minutes because you want to be able to set up your piano row or be able to set up and link all these tracks right here that are integrated and um, just that you can't really do it all like that so it's important you understand what this template is doing the only reason that we do it like this is because it's not effective there's no point in using machine and Fruity Loops together if if I can't use certain machine functions on Fruity Loops or I can't do something on Fruity Loops on machine 
or I can't, you know, push my note repeat or my chord mode or my scale mode, or I can't push play and stop and open the playlist and the mixer from machine because I got to do it on Fruity Loops. That's not a good or an effective integration. So that's why I made the template and that's why I kind of show y'all on all these videos how it works and what it's doing. But I think that a lot of y'all, it's still going over some people's heads because I, we're using the word template. You don't know what the hell these little things are. These aren't audio tracks. These are MIDI channels. That way it's triggering from machine. You know, machine's got 16 different pads. All these pads are linked up into the mixer inside of Fruity Loops. And when we mix the drums, we mix it on machine. I just push the mix button and I move these eight knobs and it will change the level of the audio so we don't even have to affect the audio on Fruity Loops it's just coming into these mixer channels where we can do Fruity Loops effects we can still do effects from machine so it's real powerful integration so just wanted to make sure that y'all are aware of that where all the machines features I can use on Fruity Loops all the Fruity Loops features we can use on machine all that play stop record and all these buttons we've already figured that all out so that's the big problem a lot of people have they can't stop and play and record and note repeat and scale mode and all that stuff and those are the, the most powerful features of machine that's exactly what you want in fruity loops because we don't have a scale mode and fruity loops and a chord mode and uh, note repeat and stuff like that that's powerful so you want to use them together so anyway um, i went ahead and i started a beat today man so i'm just going to go over this beat real quick and end this video i just wanted to share that with y'all the key part of the template and what y'all see what i did on this beat right here is just real simple this is a real simple beat so i just go here to the uh guitar and what i did was i started off with this guitar let me plug my headphones in because i keep my mic next to my speakers and uh when the audio plays it, it records in the mic and then y'all hear the echo and it just sounds crazy on top of the fact that it's only coming out of one ear <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take off all these effects. You can see all these effects that I put on my sounds, and I wanted to just show you all and go over that real quick. I started with this right here. Um, I've been using Contact because Contact has so many sounds, and um, there's so many of them that I haven't gotten the chance to really use. So I started with this right here, and uh, this is just a guitar-type sound. You can see the instrument just a little guitar and um, I went ahead and I made a chord using Chihulu I found three chords and they sounded good together so I played the notes and we put the chord together and it sounds like this So I like those notes. They sounded uh, decent together. So I said, I'll just go ahead and play that chord and I'll add something to it. So uh, what I did was I went ahead into the mixer right here. And you can see that I like to use Easy Mix. I told you all about Easy Mix. It's real cool because it has a lot of different amps and presets for guitars and different sounds. It's supposed to be like an easy mixing machine. <laughs> Going to mix your sound. But it really has a lot of effects and stuff like that. It processes the sound. So I put that on there. I also went to Guitar Rig. I told y'all Guitar Rig is so powerful. It's for, probably my best, or favorite effect plugin. And uh, it's real good on guitars. And, but um, this is why Guitar Rig is so powerful because it has all of these right here components. All of these are di different effects and instruments that you can use to change the effect of the sound. So you can see right here under delay and echo, it's got all these different devices, all these different distortion devices, dynamics. It's got all these EQs. It's got all these reverbs. It just has so many different things. And you can just lay them on top of each other like this. And they all link up to them. And you can make yourself a huge patch full of different effects and different instruments that have changed the sound. It also has dope presets. So you definitely got to check that out. I did that. And then I put this uh, self beat cutters. I've let y'all know. It's just like a pitch changing effect. It changes the pitch or the time of my of my uh, instrument basically so I just put those on it and um, all of my instruments go to the instrument bus I started doing this a while back it's real good to have all your drums go to a drum bus all your instruments go to an instrument bus of course you could go on that and uh, do processing like compression or something but just remember it's gonna affect every sound so you really want to be careful with that but um, 
what I did on the instrument is I put this self beat cutter and what it's doing is it's basically slowing or pitch shifting the all the melody sounds so they might start off on one key but by the time they hit that they're shifted to another and uh, once I did that it sounds like this you can hear it So you can hear it's a lot more light, and uh, it's also been shifted down in pitch, you can hear. And you can hear that it's not as bright as it was before. So I just uh, went ahead and I just kept that right there, and I just, I went ahead and I, uh, I went ahead and I opened up Complete Control. I'll let y'all know it's real powerful, Complete Control, because it allows you to use machine features inside of your DAW. So I went ahead and I loaded it up and I went ahead and I turned the scale mode on and I went ahead and I played these notes right here. They're basically just two keys. You know how when you push two keys, it's almost like a chord, but it's like a broken chord. And I just went ahead and I played just these little patterns on top of the progression I had. And it's just in the background and it's coming on the same instrument. So it'll hit that same instrument and go through all those same effects. So I didn't make its own mixer channel for it. It just goes right through there. You can hear it, it sounds like this. So it just says dun 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 dun. So just added that right there. After I added that, I just uh, went ahead onto this pad. I just opened up Electrix. You can see Electrix right here. And uh, we loaded up a patch. This is Electrix. We loaded up a patch inside of Electrix and we just just added a small simple sound where I'm just hitting two notes where it goes from this note up to this one. And I like to add weird ambient background sounds like that on my melody sometimes. And so together they'll sound like this. So you can hear those sounds, and um, they're not mixed or anything, but you can hear them all mushing together. And after I did that, I just went ahead and I loaded up a piano. And on the piano, I didn't do anything special either. I just, just did three basic notes. And um, this piano right here, it's going, and it's getting pitch, pitch shifted just like all the other sounds. So it basically matches the strum, the little strum that we have right here. It matches that and it just goes along with it so they kind of just blend in all together and it just kind of sounds like one little sound and it's like this right here let me turn the piano up you can hear so we just added just a little melody like that and you can see right here I have another Nexus. I was trying to find another sound, but I never did, and I might have to find it later. Maybe a lead, maybe a choir, maybe something, or maybe not. So I had that little Nexus open right there. That was about it, man. I, I came through and I put an 808 on the beat or the little melody, just those eight sounds or those four sounds, and just put a little 808 on it. We didn't do anything special. You can see right here the notes just go boom, boom, and then they go right here. So it's just hitting about two notes every bar and uh, just kind of up and down nothing special and there's no slides or anything on it right now once I did that what I like to do is I go into machine I've showed y'all on machine how you can make a drum kit go ahead and load up your sounds into the little the little pads you can either drag them from Fruity Loops from right here and your drum kit drop them or you can uh, if you're organized you can browse through machine load up samples using using the browser you know right here Go into your drum kits or whatever, find your little drums, and go ahead and load them up. I've showed y'all, after you load up your kit and you have all your sounds, it's good to go ahead and color them. So I like to color coordinate mine. So the first four, I'll make red, and then the next four. So these are rows of pads, and they're all different colors. And it's just nice to have them lit up, especially when it's nighttime, you can see. After you've done that, just go ahead and right-click it and go to Save with Samples. It'll ask you where you want to save it. And you should have a folder where you're saving all these kits because 
It takes time to make a kit, and sometimes you find dope sounds to make your kit with. There's no point in finding the, the greatest kick or the greatest snare, and you don't save it, so you never even can't even find that kick or snare ever again in your life because your library is so huge. It was just chance, you know, coming across it that one day. And uh, you should always save them so that you have good sounds on deck. So I'll go ahead and save those kits right there. And uh, once they're saved, I've showed y'all a great a great thing to do is select all of them. I can push select and push all on my machine MK3, or I could have just clicked right here and held down shift. You see how they're all grayed up and lit up. It's a good idea to select them and uh, <laughs> basically to go to the voice settings and put them on polyphony one. That way, each sound only plays one time and doesn't repeat over and over itself and muffle itself. And also to change the envelope, either to AHD or ADSR, and set the hold and decay for the drum samples, depending on what type of envelope you set. So once you have that all set up, you know, you can go here to um, deselect all of those. You're basically ready to go, and that's why I showed y'all right here, where I laid the drums down inside of... Fruity Loops. You can do them either way inside of Fruity Loops or Machine. It doesn't really matter. So I'll just go ahead and I'll just drop dots right here. You can see some of the notes look like this instead of little dots. And that's because sometimes I'll go and I'll click on Piano Roll and I'll push Control A to select all the notes and then I'll hold Alt and um, sometimes I'll change the volume just like this and I'll make the volume on all the notes to the maximum so that they're all coming in full velocity. And sometimes I'll do stuff like this where I'll right click and I'll select a portion of the beat and then I'll push control B and it'll copy that portion it'll make it longer so sometimes I want the pattern to be up to nine instead of five so I'll just select that portion and hold control B and it'll duplicate it so sometimes I'll do that or sometimes I'll just lay them right here you can do it either way um, you can see right here I can click on piano roll and I can see those notes and then I can close piano roll and I you can see that they're still boxes the way I do that and how you do that is just by setting the note length if you push control a and then you push shift D it'll make all the notes a certain length it'll discard the length so they'll all just be little dashes and when you do that you'll be able to switch between piano roll and step sequencer and still keep the little box there so that's like a advanced tip but uh just go ahead and lay down little patterns I laid down a little pattern a basic hi-hat you can see it's just going two every two no uh, rolls or anything in there just got some extra hi-hats on for some little little sauce and that was it man put an open hi-hat on there and you can see it right there remember if you hold control and right click you can see all the notes sometimes you can't see and you're trying to zoom in and do all this waste of time just uh, hold control right click so there it is man got all the little stuff and I told y'all that once you've done got your beat like this all you got to do is go up here to pattern one right click and go to split by channel it's gonna split all these so that when I open up the playlist right here all the channels are gonna be here on the on the left I'll be able to select them I can hold shift and select all of them and drag them over here once you got your little boxes, you just paint your little picture, man. You just paint a picture and you can sequence the beat out. It's a lot easier to sequence on here than it is on machine. It can be done on machine. It's just uh, it gets complicated with ideals mode and ranger mode. And you might want to take a, a small little something out right here and there. And it just gets complicated having to make duplicate groups and duplicate patterns and stuff like that. So we just paint them all right here inside of Fruity Loops. And it's just as effective. We don't have to to bounce our audio tracks to, to MIDI or anything like that and um, so that's about it man I'm gonna go ahead and just play this little beat um, and then go ahead and end the video I'm glad I was able to keep it short because the shorter it is the easier it is to upload but yeah that's about it man all you gotta do man is just sequence your beats out just like you normally do inside of Fruity Loops or sequence them out inside a machine or do both have some stuff in machine some stuff in fruity loops but when you get to the end you can click on if you do have it in machine just click on this MIDI button and drag it out drag it out to the track that's why you need to have MIDI tracks because you need to have something that can trigger all the pads why the hell would you 
have a kick here and then I'm then I'm gonna open up another kick. I'm gonna open the same kick in Fruity Loop so that the kick is right there so that I can bring the MIDI over. You could do that, but now you have an audio sample here and here. So you just want this MIDI trigger so that you can trigger the audio sample from machine. Machine is a great drum machine, so you should you should do you should use it for your drums. Oh, in addition to your melodies. But uh that's about it, man. So I'll just lay down some drums. He's triggering from machine. Got him sequencing Fruity Loops. Got a little melodies right here. That's about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, I just talked most of this time because I wanted to point out some key facts to y'all. Talking fast, y'all are able to process it all and just get a lot of information quickly. So that's it. Till next time, I'll just play this little melody that I made. Um, at this point, like I said, we'll just right click right here, split by channel. And then I'll sequence it out. I'll have certain sounds coming in at certain times and certain sounds coming out. And that's why we might add another sound with this Nexus that we have open right here. Might add more sounds just so that at certain parts we have certain sounds and certain parts they we have other sounds. Just to add, make more variety. You could still go down here and add more breaks in the drum and stuff like that. Um, when you want to do breaks in the drum, a lot of times we'll just go right here on the playlist. And uh, you might make something smaller or make it bigger. That that makes a break right there and then coming in. So you can do a lot right here on the playlist right here. All right, so until next time, man, Cadillac Tracks. Check out my custom MK3 template. I'll put a link in the, in the chat section below where you can see what the template is and how it looks, actually. And uh, this is the integration. So the template's not just a Fruity Loops template where it's it's set up. It's a Fruity Loops template. It's also a machines template where it's all set up and routed. And it's also the configuration template to where it's set up on the hardware. It's where you can push buttons on the hardware and control Fruity Loops functions or use different things like the knob on machine to browse through samples and stuff like that. Or just use the pads to play the piano on an instrument that you loaded up in Fruity Loops in scale mode without having to load it up in the machine. Stuff like that. All right, till next time, man. One. All right, man. Till next time.